sad for any passerby. What am I doing with my life right now? That's so cool. I can't believe how wet it is right now and we're just sat on the floor in a car park. Wow, that is such a difference. As you guys know on this channel, we wait for the perfect weather conditions to film videos and we've got incredible forecast today. We've got lovely grey skies, the lighting's quite dark. It's tipping it down with rain and I've got a rather large blue umbrella above my head. But welcome back to another Lucy on Cars. <laughs> these big car YouTube channels get these beautiful press cars loaned from the manufacturer themselves. I'm still on the smaller side, so I'm basically borrowing my family and friends' cars to film these reviews right now, hence the very random selection of cars we've seen on the channel recently. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to today's reviewed car of choice. Behind me, the Fiat Abarth. 595 Trofero Special Edition. It's a lot of fun actually. It's a very interesting little car. It's a car that I haven't driven before until today. I drove it to this car park today and I'm gonna give you guys a full review today what it's like to drive it for the first time. And on this channel, I like to give you real life reactions to things. Hopefully give you an idea of what this car might be like to own if you're looking to get one yourself. I actually can't quite believe the weather today, but we did pay for the insurance already on this car today without checking the weather forecast and we're just gonna deal with it. It is what it is. The show must go on. We can't wait for sunny days around here because there aren't any <laughs> welcome back to the channel if you're new around here please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it today i've been loving reading the comments recently there's been some interesting ones i might read some of them out later on in the video i've been kind of subject to some interesting comments recently um but yeah keep them coming let's head inside quickly and we'll give you a rundown of the spec of this car to walk into the car shot is going to be disrupted by the fact that i have to now push an umbrella down hang on open the car door first half get in Close the umbrella. I was like, oh God, that didn't go to plan. I was like, oh, could least scoop myself in, but carry on. So this is a 2018 Fiat Bar 595 Trofeo. It's got a 1.4 litre turbocharged petrol engine, which gives out 160 brake horsepower. And the standard of bath is 140. So you're getting another, another 20 brake horsepower, which I think 160 is a lot for a 1.4 litre engine. It was like a very, very big jump up to me. It's got a 0 to 60 of 7.1 seconds. So it's a very, very powerful car. However, you guys know recently I did a review on the Volvo V70 and I said it wasn't really a car that I would find that exciting because it's not like a fun, exciting driver's car. However, this technically is a fun, exciting driver's car because how it's kind of marketed as the kind of revolutionized concept of the traditional sports car. However, I've never been that excited by Fiat's, Fiat 500s, this shape of car, this kind of like hot hatch style. It's never really excited me. So I hope that today I can change that opinion. I can change my mind and see if this could be a car that I'd own in the future. I'm gonna be totally honest that I've never been that into these cars particularly. I can appreciate that there's a big community for them. However, I feel like I don't really fit underneath that umbrella. I know that the Abarth community is very strong. There's a big community in the UK. I know there's meetups that happen quite frequently and the person whose car this is actually goes to the meetups themselves and it's it's got such a strong community. However, it's not anything that I've ever dabbled in, but of course I've got this opinion with nothing to back it up because I've never driven one. So basically, I'm talking a load of rubbish, but by the end of this video, I'm gonna have a valid opinion from having actually driven it. What I do appreciate is that this is certainly not a sporty Fiat 500. It's a total different ball game. They've not just, I don't know, sometimes you might pick a sport option in a car and they'll put like a little sport sticker or something here or give you like a different steering wheel. This is a totally different car. They've stuck on a dump valve. We've got a quad exhaust on the back. It, it really feels like a good car to drive. I'm really happy that it's manual as well. We've got a manual car again. You guys know I love a manual. We've got Scorpions absolutely everywhere, including the non-factory fitted, but the ad added on after. Scorpion, what is it? Is it an air freshener? I've actually never given this a sniff. Let's have a look. Here it is an air freshener. It doesn't look like one. I thought it was just a piece of plastic hanging off the, uh, the rear view mirror, but that does in fact have a uh, warming vanilla scent. Very nice. We've also got the yellow seat belt here, which feels quite racery. That's the thing with this car. They've really made it look sporty and really made it sound sporty. There's a lot of detail going on and it makes you feel like you're about to drive a very fast car. It kind of excites you when you're sat ready to drive. So without further ado, I thought the rain had stopped then. It hasn't. Let's start this car. Actually, can we just have a quick shot of my feet, please? bizarre look down here i've got my phone light on can you see that on the camera george so i've got fairly chunky boots probably my fault 
but when I've got my foot on the clutch I'm pretty much on the brake at the same time and equally when I've got my foot on the brake it's easy to accidentally tap the accelerator the the pedals are very close together you either need very small feet which I do not have wear smaller shoes maybe they're not really designed for chunky boots um it's fine I've driven fine and safely with them but if this was my everyday car, I don't think I'd be wearing these boots very often. It's sometimes nice to have a good old fashioned key turn to start the engine. You don't get many of them these days. We can turn that light off now if I'm driving. So there's something quite nice about physically putting a key in, turning it to start the car. I, don't, I miss that in cars where it's um, keyless ignition. I never I never got my head around the whole card slot one. I remember we had one when we were growing up. I think it was a Renault. I've got a funny memory of it of this like plastic thick card that you put through in the little slot. And I always found that to be a bit weird, a bit like you're sort of um, playing with like a kid's toy car. I don't know, I didn't like it. But anyway, good old fashioned key to start. I'm yet to find if this actual seat can go up. I'd quite like to be a bit higher. I feel like there's just so much above my head right now. However, I can see enough and it's fine and we'll make, make it work with how it is. Uh, we are steaming up, so I'm gonna have to quickly put this on full blast before I drive off so we can actually see. One sec. very usable power. I've driven an M4 recently and I've said that the power is so intense that you're really not going to be able to use it to its full potential in the UK on just like regular roads without getting arrested effectively. This just feels very different. It feels like I'm able to really use all the power in this and actually enjoy the car as it should be. I think I saw a quote on this car that was something along the lines of built on the track used on the road or, or something like that that sort of suggests that yes it's a sports car but it's a sports car that you could use every day. Like, like I've said with the Lotus recently, it, the power is something that you can actually use uh, in daily life and not just if you took it on a track. I mean, this, this isn't even with the sports button on yet. So the sport button, it gives you a lot more torque and opens up the exhaust so it's a lot louder and a lot more fun. I think there's nothing wrong with liking a loud car. I know some people turn their noses up at really loud exhaust and think, oh, it's antisocial and it's too noisy. I personally really like a loud car and I think it's a lot of fun. So I'm in third gear now, 39 miles an hour. And even with other sport mode on, there's a lot of torque, there's a lot of pull in the higher gears. So second gear, 40 miles an hour, we're going up to third gear now. You really feel that turbo kick in and there's just so much power from such a small car. But I do have to say I love the driving position. I, I can really see everything on the road. I've got great visibility right now. So we're in an area with a lot of roundabouts and it's great to really test the handling out. And I have to say, Shakira would not like this car because there's not a lot of body roll at all, if any. Gosh, the roads are really flooded. Whoa, I'm pretty sure we drown in that right now in this car. Yeah, the, it, it really does stick to the road and it's obviously front wheel drive, but the rain might make you think that this would feel a little bit more wobbly. I'm gonna get over quickly. But actually, I'm sticking to the road very nicely considering. It's quite noisy in here though, I have to say. I mean, obviously the engine's noisy, but because of the rain and because of, I don't know, maybe the low profile tires, but it, it feels like a quite a noisy, noisy place to be when we're on the uh, quicker roads back there. But yeah, going around this roundabout fairly fast. No movement whatsoever. It's really nice. I'm just gonna press the button once I'm off this roundabout. Let's move over. Everything goes red. Wow, that is such a difference. Oh, it's, it's so fun. It's really fun. I never thought I'd say it, but it's really fun. Let's go back down to third quick. Oh, that's so cool. That is a huge amount of fun. There's so much power. When you're already at sort of 40, 50 miles an hour, knock it down a gear and we just flew. So some people say that when driving in a bath, you kind of feel like you're sitting on top of the car rather than in it and rather than you're sort of like behind the wheel driving it. I mean, I have to kind of agree with that statement. It's not a low down sports car like your, your classic sports car. It's not a Lotus, it's not an MX-5. It's not 
I don't know, like, I, I wouldn't expect to feel like I'm sort of integrated within the car because I am technically sat quite high up and quite upright for a sports car. But I don't, I don't know, I do feel quite, I do feel like I'm driving the car, but I have to say the steering isn't particularly responsive. So I'm sort of able to wiggle the steering wheel around a little bit and nothing actually happens. There's not that much feedback. It doesn't feel super direct. So if I sort of turn a tiny bit, nothing really happens. You've, you've, got, to, you've got to steer more than you think you should have to steer. Uh, to get anywhere and speaking of steering the turning circle is pretty bad as well but these are all fairly minor things and I, I think to be honest with you if, if you like the shape of this car and how this car looks and you like sporty cars fast cars you like cars that are fun to drive I think this is a really great car to go for but like I said it is I guess I suppose it's a niche whether or not you like the shape of it for me personally if I was looking for a sports car this probably isn't where I'd look it's not particularly to my style but that's obviously total personal preference I could definitely appreciate these cars a lot more now than I did before I drove one quick funny story this specific car this actual car has a uh, an aerial deleted option so there's basically just a little silver disc where the aerial would stick out if you went for that from factory it would cost you a whopping 600 pounds as an optional extra well, actually it's an optional removal not an extra there's, you're not getting any extra you're getting less for 600 pounds uh, which is quite quite a crazy amount i think but it does have a scorpion on it so it's probably worth it arcade games the cars that you sit in or like so you've got a big screen in front of you a steering wheel stuck on a little box and then you've got a couple of little pedals to play with at the bottom so it's like as close to a car as you're going to get when you're seven years old i have to say the clutch resembles that slightly it's the lightest clutch i've ever driven honestly you have to put zero weight on it and it just goes flat to the floor it doesn't even feel like a clutch you get nothing back from it it's the most selfish clutch I've ever met, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. I don't think people drive cars and think, oh, that's a lovely clutch. Like, I, don't, I don't particularly care about clutches, so it is what it is. And I think if you had the car, you'd get used to it fairly quickly. But it did really stick out to me when I first drove it as like, oh, wow, that does feel very, very light. Shocking, isn't it? Horrendous. Oh, dear. Is it getting heavier? Yeah, the camera's getting so. Yeah, actually, because the reason is, George, is because you're holding the umbrella over your head and not the camera. I'm really sorry to say it, but the camera's slightly more expensive than your head right now. So maybe. Anyways, this is the car from the outside. They've got it in the podium blue colour with the Medina yellow highlights. So we've got specks of yellow around the car. I think if you're having a car like this, it's definitely fun to go for like a big, bright, vibrant colour with the contrasting. It's probably not for everyone, but I think it's quite fun. It's actually a really tiny car and I'm really, I'm not used to driving small cars at all. You guys know we've got the Lotus Elan in the garage. That's a kind of low, small car that it, it feels different. This is kind of still more quite high up, but it's so narrow that I had to let a car through earlier. It wasn't until they went past me that I realized that we both would have fit through that gap. I'm totally not used to the size of this car, it's tiny. We've got the fairly classic headlights that look very similar to the Fiat 500, but there's some more sporty touches. Like it's, it's fairly low along the front and this is some of the highlighted yellow here. The bath lettering on the front is an extra that they've added on as well uh, with these little Italian, faded Italian colors along the front grille there. Nice bigger bath badge on the front. I can't believe how wet it is right now and we're just sat on the floor in a car park talking about this car but anyway all for you guys i hope you enjoy this please give this video a thumbs up for me standing in the rain in the cold in the middle of winter sat on the floor of a car park good thing i found this old jumper to throw on today no, i'm only joking it's actually fleece lined it's wonderfully warm now round to the wheels we've got some let me go this side we've got some 17 inch alloy wheels in black with some more yellow detailing here the scorpion badge i do think scorpions are quite a cool animal i think it's quite a good animal to go with this car i have eaten one in thailand can't say they're to my taste very crunchy the yellow brake calipers here i'm so i'm soaked what am i doing with my life right now i'm i'm drenched i was considering filming this without an umbrella but I'm glad I went for it, not that it's really helping. This one's like a parody of a car review because I just stood in the rain getting really wet. Just looking at this blue a little bit closer, it really reminds me of the San Marino blue, which is a BMW individual color and it looks stunning on an M4. I remember it well. Jordan, I'm over here. What are you, what are you filming this raindrop for? I'm over here, come back. We've got the yellow wing mirrors as well. And to be honest with you, this car, I almost feel like I'm expecting this again to keep going, but it just kind of stops here. It's very, very short, obviously great for parking around town. This is definitely a very good errand running car to nip around, park in tight spaces, get around very quickly because of the power of the engine. It's 
<gasps> I'm so cold. We've got some water bath detailing here and because it's the 595 Trafera edition, we've got some extra detail with the little badge there, which I think is a nice little extra. Now round to the back. One thing I will say I'm not used to, this has got no parking sensors. And as a girl born in 1996, Ever since I've learned to drive, parking sensors have pretty much been on every car I've ever driven and I'm not used to parking without them. Obviously I can park without parking sensors, that's not what I'm saying, but I have to say I've become very reliant. In 2024, I'm very reliant on my parking sensors. So reversing back in this without them was something I had to keep in mind. I was kind of like waiting for a beat, but because it's a hatchback, similar to how I'd explain it with the Range Rover, you can pretty much see exactly where the car stops. It's only a small amount of car after the rear window, so actually it's pretty easy to maneuver without parking sensors and you'll be absolutely fine. Quick boot check. I don't know if it's gonna open without me doing the key, but yeah, it is. Is it an electric boot? No. Very small boot, but to be honest, Oh, we can come under here, George. Why don't we just film the whole review under here? It's very dry. Possibly the smallest parcel shelf in the world. Hilarious. That is so funny, what's the point? Is there any point in this? But actually the use of space is pretty good because you could definitely fit like a week's worth of food shopping in here. I mean, am I gonna get in it to, to demonstrate? Is it becoming my trademark to get in the boots? I think I'm gonna have to, aren't I? Right, I'm just gonna go for it. Again, this looks very bad for any passerbys, but... be around the back without mentioning the lovely quad exhaust down here very noisy quite exciting when you're driving hearing this car going along when you turn on the sports mode button as well it opens up the exhaust and it, it really does sound amazing so let's quickly thought i turned that off let me try that again there you go i thought i would now talk about the interior of this car because i've got quite a lot to say about it actually first thing to note is I'm not used to being this close to my passenger. I know we're boyfriend and girlfriend, but <laughs> there's really not much room. If you just point the camera down here quickly, George, that there's literally like, what is that? I've got, I mean, my hands are fairly large, I would say, fairly big hands. There's like a hand, hands worth of gap between the two seats. And in the BMW and the Range Rover, we've got a center console that would take up this space, but there isn't actually anything there at all. It's just the handbrake and some holes for your seat belt. So there's really not much in terms of space inside the car. However, despite that, it still feels like I'm not cramped and I'm not in a really tight, tiny car. It's a small car inside, but I feel like the space is fairly well used. Maybe because of how tall it is. There's a lot of room above my head right now. It's kind of deceptively big inside. Like, it, it, there's quite a lot of extra space, despite the fact that it is a, is a small car, technically. I, I don't think I'm explaining that very well. Everything's very kind of upright and flat, as opposed to in the BMW where things are more slanted, that takes up more room. This is kind of all pushed to the side, allowing there to be a lot more space um, around the driver so steering wheel I really like the steering wheel I think it's got a nice feel to it when you're driving there's little grips along here it's leather it's really comfy to hold on to when you drive I like the little silver detailing at the top here I think it's quite a good looking steering wheel fairly simple fairly straightforward with its buttons we've literally got buttons for phone calls and up and down a volume switch voice control and a mute so very simple and I, I quite like that I think sometimes manufacturers overcomplicate steering wheels and they have too many buttons on them but really when you're driving there's only a few things you're going to want to do. It's actually a really big steering wheel for the car and the fact that it's squared off at the bottom it's giving that kind of Audi sporty feel. The stalks feel fairly fairly plasticky. I mean it actually is quite smart looking inside. All along the dash there is this kind of a uh, like a gunmetal grey it is plastic, but it looks like almost metallic, which to me is actually quite a lot nicer than all the Fiat 500s I've seen, which are like this kind of shiny, plasticky cream thing that kind of looks like a pretend, like a Dolly's car or something that you'd have um, when you're a kid. So this is definitely nicer for me, much more sporty. All the dials are fairly straightforward here and fairly simple, but I do like these silver ringed buttons here with a kind of glass over the top of it it gives it a bit more detail a little bit more going on and actually to be honest I do think there's quite a contrast here I think this looks very basic but I think this looks more luxurious so it's interesting that they put these two side by side this looks kind of Aston Martin and this looks kind of like a our builder's van we've got a funky shaped screen at the top here it's kind of my parents are aliens-esque shape going on there and something I have to say I don't like in this interior is this it's like a webcam, it's like I'm sat on MSN. It's in the way. I know people say that heads-up display is love-hate, but you can turn that off. 
this is stuck on you very much can't take this off i mean you could probably snap it off technically but it's advised against it's basically a boost gauge for the turbo so it's interesting to see but i don't think i need to see it all the time and i wouldn't mind it if it was hidden away in this menu here or if it's a setting you can put on here i'm not sure why it needs to be higher than the steering wheel and in my line of sight while i'm driving it doesn't make much sense to me the seats are pretty comfortable they're quite upright and they're not i don't think i'd want to do a really long journey in this car like I said before, it's quite a hard ride and it's not the kind of like, it's not the seat you'd melt into like with the Range Rover or the Volvo we were in recently. They're comfy, but they're not anything that special. It's a cloth material, which to be honest with you, I do quite like when you haven't got heated seats. If you had heated seats, I'd say leather all the way, but without them, leather can get very cold in the winter, as I'd know wearing these trousers today. Very bad idea, I'm freezing. Having cloth seats just means that in any condition, in the heat, in the cold, they're not going to change temperature as much as leather would. I've sat on many leather seats in the middle of summer and burnt myself as well, which isn't great. So yeah, actually cloth seats, I think are a good shout without the heated seats. We've got the Abarth detailing along the head here, and I quite like this little cutout here. It just makes it look much more sporty. Space in the back is fairly limited it's technically a four seater there's not even room for a fifth seat in the middle there there's literally not a fifth seat it's not like one where it's like two and a half seats there's literally i mean unless you were this small like this which i don't think anyone really is these days these days like they were before what, what do i mean these days what do i mean yeah very limited seats in the back but it's a two seater with a space for two people in the back sometimes i wouldn't say it's like a, an everyday four seater car i'm not sure how you'd fit baby seats in the back i haven't tried that You'll have to ask dad cars to try that one out for you because I'm not getting the car seat out in this weather, no chance. But generally it's a nice place to be when you're driving. I don't have many complaints. There's some bits I quite like, there's some bits I'm not sure on, but I'd say my review of the interior is pretty good. So to summarize, it's hard to compare this car to any other car that I've driven or that I can think of off the top of my head. It's really in a class of its own. It's not your classic sports car. It's not your classic hot hatch, really. You can't relate it to anything like that at all. So it really is, different and unique it's a very unique car and it's, it's quite nice to drive a unique car sometimes i feel like a lot of the cars i drive are fairly similar i mean not right now on the channel the channel's absolutely all over the place at the moment we've got ginormous estates we've got tiny little lotuses we've obviously we'll hopefully have some nice big range rovers back very very soon watch this space i know i keep saying that but continue to watch this space because it is coming soon but really i can see why there's a lot of appreciation for this car whether or not it's for me i'm still undecided i'm not i'm not particularly excited by the idea of owning one myself but i'm starting to get a greater understanding of why there's such a kind of fan club uh, of these cars because it is a lot of fun to drive. I have had a smile on my face today driving it. It's probably not my style of car that I go for in terms of looks, but like I said, that's totally personal preference and it's hard for me to say, oh, I don't like this car because I don't like how it looks because that's not really a valid reason because other people like how it looks. But it's a good car to drive. It's a lot of fun. It's nice and small. It's nippy. It sounds great. I'd love to hear in the comments if any of you guys have one yourselves or if you're looking to buy one or if you love them or if you hate them or if if you have anything to say today, please let me know. I am going to flash some interesting comments on the screen from the last video for you to all enjoy reading. Some bizarre ones in there, aren't there? But there you go. That's the nature of the game and we're all in it together. If you didn't enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to Lucy on Cars if you're new. What do you guys think of my new tr channel banner? Is that what it's called? Channel banner? I quite like that one. As always, let me know in the comments if you've got a cool car that you'd like me to drive. Make sure you email me. Email on the screen right now and we can see if we can make something work. And I'll see you very soon in the next Lucy on Cars. Goodbye.